It's another away day for Exeter City as we make the mammoth trip to the capital to take on Leighton Orient. Welcome to Park Life. Coming up on today's show, we speak to Saturday's goal scorer Joel Randall, we speak to City fan and trustee Yasmin Weston, and Will Barrett takes a look back in time at previous contests with Leighton Orient. But first, here are the highlights from that win against Scunthorpe. Exeter to come forward now with Randall Williams. Williams on for Jay. Jay into the penalty. Here. Squares it for Bowman. It's going to come here for Randall. Joel Randall with an opportunity and he scores. And Exeter take the lead in the 36th minute. And it is Joel Randall. The ball came across to him on the far left hand side of the penalty area. Randall was able to compose himself and get his fourth goal of the season. 36 minutes gone. It's Exeter 1, Scunthorpe 0. by Sparks. Sparks now able to bring it down. Sends it in and it's a slippy ball for Howard. He drops it in and it goes. Matt Jay gets Exeter's second. You have to feel for the goalkeeper as the ball came in. Suddenly a downpour of rain came almost at the moment that Sparks sent the ball in. It slipped from his fingers and there was Matt Jay to follow in and volleyed in. It's Exeter 2, Scunthorpe 0.
now Williams finds Jake Taylor. Taylor into the box, shoots and scores! <laughs> and that's it, game over. With six minutes of added time to come. I don't believe there'll be time for Scunthorpe to come back from this. Jake Taylor bursting into the box, firing beyond Howard. It's Exeter 3, Scunthorpe 1. Scoring his fourth goal of the season on Saturday is the man we all affectionately call Goal Randall here in the office. Here is the man himself talking about tonight's game in London. On to, to, to talk about late in Orient for a moment. We, we, knew they had, we know they had COVID problems at the start of the season. Scunthorpe perhaps had some COVID problems on Saturday. I mean, does it, does it play on your mind a bit? Is it always in the back of your mind that, that these games are possibly a risk for you? It is, yeah. It does play a little bit of a factor in, in the back of your mind. But um, when you step out onto the pitch, obviously, it's, it's different. You're just thinking about the game. But it is a little bit of a worry. And we've got to do our best. We're trying our best to keep safe around the training ground and around the stadium when we're there. We're, we're doing the right thing. So hopefully the squad are staying safe and we, we won't be put down with any COVID situations, hopefully. How are you enjoying it playing with some of the some of the players that you would have played with in the academy now in the first team? You've all come up together, you're starting together. I mean, do you just feel like you've never really it's like you've you've taken a step up, but you've had people with you the whole way? Yeah, I think that helps. It's definitely helped me massively stepping in with seeing familiar faces in the team when you're walking out and in a in and around the dressing room scene, you're just playing, going out there with your mates and enjoying it. It's, it's unbelievable, really, to play professional football like that with, with your close mates. And then, obviously, we're, doing, we're all doing really well. And we all want to push each other and get the best out of each other as well. So I think it's a great bunch of lads we've got in the, uh, in the first team at the moment. And hopefully we can keep pushing on, keep improving and, and doing well for the team. We're in the middle of a, a hectic schedule and I think this is game number four of six in, in, in three weeks. As a player, do you relish the fact that you've got the games coming thick and fast or do you sort of just think, oh, hang on a minute, I need a rest, this is, this is too much? No, nah, we're still early into the season, aren't we? I, I hope to play every minute or as many starts as possible and so does everyone really. They all want to play games and be involved with, with wins and good games and stuff, so... It's just, it, it is quick turnarounds and you've got to do the right things. You've got to prepare and relax and rest properly. But I think we'll be ready. We'll be ready for Tuesday and then Saturday and then Tuesday again. We, it's just part of the job, isn't it? And you mentioned it earlier about, about the depth, depth we have in our squad. I think South End, Alex Fisher came off the bench to score. Jake's come off the bench to score against Scunthorpe. I mean, it's just superb that we've got that depth of goal scorers on the bench as well. Yeah, it is. I, I saw the bench yesterday and I thought, that is a, it is a really good bench. And obviously there's people not even in getting onto the bench. They're, they're spare men. So, yeah, the, the squad depth is unbelievable and everyone will be ready. Everyone will, can step in and, and play their part. So, yeah, it, it really is good. But it also keeps you on your toes when you've got the shirt. You want to keep the shirt. And uh, I think everyone everyone's doing well at the moment. So... It's, yeah, it's given the manager a real selection headache, a nice headache, if you'd if you like to say, because everyone is performing so well that he, he has to pick out of all the, all the top performers who to start. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a good problem to have for him, I suppose. But um, whatever 11 he picks, um, they'll go out there and do their best. And we, we all want to do well this season. We've got aspirations for the season. So whoever's out there, they'll, they'll give it their all and hopefully hopefully get the points. As ever, it's now time for club historian Will Barrett, who rewinds the clocks and looks back at some historic encounters with Leighton Orient. 
City travel to London looking to extend a run of six games without defeat in the league and against tonight's opponents, Leighton Orient. City last lost to the O's back in December 2011 and have since gone unbeaten in this fixture, scoring 17 and conceding just four on a run of five wins and one draw. That draw came at the park in September last year when a strike from Pierre Sweeney and Nicky Law's injury time penalty earned the Grecians a share of the points in the two-all draw. The historic record between the clubs is almost as evenly balanced as that game with City winning 31, drawing 24 and losing 32 in 87 meetings that go way back to 1929 when City won 4-0 in our first ever encounter. Leighton Orient have yet to win a league game at home this season with only wins in the EFL Trophy and a victory over Plymouth Argyle at Brisbane Road. However, the Grecians will arrive in London to face a side who have picked up two of their three league wins in their last two matches against Tranmere and Stevenage. City had been due to play this fixture on the final day of last season, but rather than what might have been, it's a case of what might be as the lads look to continue their positive start to the league campaign. It's time to look back at a classic encounter between City and Orient. We go back almost four years to November 2016 when City were near the foot of the League 2 table. But a 1-0 win against Orient kicked off a brilliant run which saw City finish in the playoff positions. The man who scored that goal, well you might recognise him. I wonder where he is now. We are a team that like to play football. I think there are a lot of sort of speculation about women's football and what to expect and stuff, but I think you're not going to know until you come and watch. And I think we are a team that like to keep the ball and play with possession. We like to play out from the back, play football, yeah, build a nice build up. Play. You particularly, you're into your call of duty and you play on the bus sometimes. <laughs> Um, who's the best Call of Duty player in the squad? Best Call of Duty player? Is it you? Yeah. <laughs> I spent way too much time as a kid after school playing Xbox and Call of Duty. Uh, was, I'd spend just hours and even rack up days, like, get gameplays and, oh, uh, yeah. I think Modern Warfare 2 was my game. Got like 10th prestige on it, just spent. Uh, hopefully, was... <laughs> hopefully we will we'll see you score soon then. I think you're all right, goal gets <laughs> make sense to a lot of people now you've said that. Um, who's the most competitive in the squad? 
Um, or on Call of Duty, one or the other. Most con- like off off the pitch or in, on- in any context. In any context. Who's the most? I would say probably Parksy. Who is the uh, Parksy, who's, yeah. yeah? Who's the goody two shoes? <laughs> um, <laughs> the goody two shoes. Um, probably Ben Seymour. <laughs> Who takes the longest getting ready? Um, who's always long? Uh, probably Jola because he takes about three different, like shampoo, face moisturizer, like all of it into the shower with him. He's got like three bottles with him. Like, he's, yeah, probably Joe. He's got a new barnet as well. It's all long. So he takes good care of that as well. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. <laughs> Who's the uh, the best dancer? No, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me. Who's the best um, dancer? I don't know about dancing, but I think Randell's got. A f- oh, Nigel actually, Nigel. <laughs> Nigel, yeah. He loves he he loves just dancing and throwing shapes and that. He's not bad to be fair. Love it, love it. Uh, who would win a one hundred meter race? Randall, pretty boss it. I know. Uh, I know. Nikki Law seems to be in charge of the fines. Who gets fined the most? Uh, Sparksy, he <laughs> is the loosest guy in the team by a mile. Just like every fine, he just seems to pick up. It's <laughs> we try and I try and tell him, and the other young lad just try and tell him, but he just doesn't learn. <laughs> <laughs> is that why he's selling his car because he's got all these fines to pay? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, who's, the, who's the geekiest in the squad? Who's the biggest geek? Uh, I would probably say... Geek, but no, I spend a lot of time with fish. Um, driving and um, used to share lifts before COVID. So I spent a lot of time with him and he seems to know a lot about everything. So I'm going to give it to Fish. Who's the, hard, who's the club hard man? Who's hard as nails? Probably Bowman. I'd give it to Bose because the job, like, the job he does on Saturdays against two centre half hours. <laughs> I don't know how he does it, to be honest. Last couple then. Who is the biggest diva? Probably one of the young lads, probably Ben or Joel. Just, just, I don't know, just, just the personality they have and what they do to their image to make them look the best that they can, probably. I mean, that probably answers my last one as well, which was, uh, who's the one who's always taking selfies? Selfies? Um, <laughs> I share a room with Ben and he seems to be like with the flashlight a lot in the mirror and in bed or I just see like a flash go off I'm like what are you doing <laughs> taking selfies and that <laughs> so I only see Ben so probably Ben I'll do mate that'll do we've, we've learned a lot there um, <laughs> yeah like I said Call of Duty I think your goal gift will make sense now so let's hope it's not long before we see that 
Let's fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> This is the substitute, Alex Fisher. And they've pickpocketed them here. It's Joel Randall, and it comes out here for a fine effort and a fine goal from Harry Kite. Pressure off the ball from the visitors. And now there's another chance here to find the equaliser, and this time it is tucked in by Matt Jay. As ever, we love getting the views of the City fans on Parklife, and tonight here is City fan and trustee Yasmin Weston giving her views on the clash with Leighton Orient. Yasmin, thank you for joining me. Uh, so to start off with, just give me a little insight into your Exeter City journey and how you became a fan. Oh, this one again. Um, so I think everyone knows by now, but um, wasn't a huge fan of football, to be honest. Um, hated watching it on the TV, would literally leave the room when it was on. But begrudgingly went to a Tuesday night game with my brother because he had no one to go with and just got hooked, really. And um, I mean, uh, I think it was a 3-1 loss to Notts County on a Tuesday night. If, that's get, if that gets you hooked, then you know you're in for, a, in for a serious ride and what a ride it's been. And obviously, you, you've seen a fair few, few decent goals and you must have had some good memories of, of your time supporting the club. What are some of your, your biggest memories? Yeah, it's been, it's been a pretty good ride, to be honest. I think... I don't know if I'm a good luck charm or whatever, but um, obviously three playoffs in four seasons has been great to watch um, and so many, so many good memories in that. Um, I think there are some very easy ones that you can pick, obviously, but um, for me, probably um, Cheltenham away in like my first season, it was my first away game and we came behind from 2-0 behind to win 4-3 um, and that was probably like the best like entire experience of a match like the whole just like pre the match like during the game like coming from behind that whole experience was really good and any standout goals that you remember because I mean we've, we've scored some good ones even this season yeah um the Archie Collins one it's swinging away I think it was on New Year's Day I remember that one being a good one obviously Jack Stacey's goal absolutely fantastic one to witness in my first season as well um yeah, there have just been so many to pick from. Been really lucky. And from someone who didn't really like football, and now you're, I guess you, I know you say it a lot, you, you're technically an owner of the football club. I mean, being part of the trust, just talk a little bit about that and what you do there. Yeah, again, I think it was another thing where, like, I accidentally keep bumping into these things and just kind of, like, fall into it almost. But, yeah, a couple of people had said that they appreciated my opinion, which is always nice to hear. Um, and I think, obviously, representation is a massive thing in football. It, there isn't a lot of representation, especially of people other than white middle-aged men. So I think, for me, that was a really big step. And I think people appreciated what I had to say. So I just ran on a whim, really, last this time last year. Um, and something like 536 people decided that my opinion mattered. And here we are a year later trying to steer the football club through a global pandemic, which is definitely not what I signed up for, but. <laughs> 537, I, I would have voted for you if I could. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so let's look at this season then. I mean, it's been, it's been a fairly good start from the boys. and I, I know you joined me at Mansfield. What do you think of what we've seen so far? Yeah, it's been a really weird one because obviously I no longer live in Exeter. So whereas before I'd go all the time, like now you're like, looking at the results on Twitter or like going to the occasional game. But I think given, I think everybody kind of had no real expectations of this season. Whereas previously we've gone in saying we want playoffs, we want autos. I think everyone was just kind of willing to see where the season kind of, where the dust settled. And I think the dust is beginning to settle now, but it's been really good to see some of the young lads really come through and put together some really good performances. I mean, Josh Key, Joel Randall, both have been absolutely outstanding this season from what I've seen. And obviously you were with me at the chaotic game in, in Swindon, which, I mean, I'm trying not to laugh because it, it was hilarious <laughs> from our perspective, wasn't it? I mean, we saw there just how, how good some of the academy boys can be, even those that aren't necessarily in the first team in the league this season. Yeah, no, I think, I think throughout my whole time supporting Exeter City, actually, like the EFL trophy competition matches have been some of my favourite to go and watch because it's real football that you can just enjoy for what it is because it's one of those competitions that it's great to see the young lads come through. There's not a lot of pressure on it and you get to see these young 
less experienced players playing with such freedom. And I think that's what we saw at Swindon. And yeah, it was it was a really, really good game to go and watch. It's one of those ones that you definitely would have enjoyed as a fan just as much as we did in the press box. For those of you that, that don't know, obviously the game was a 4-3. Um, Alex Hutch's goal gift went viral and uh, I whacked my head off a beam and I think I got concussion for a few minutes. So uh, hopefully we can have some more more calm games this season because that certainly wasn't one of them. On to Leighton Orient then on Tuesday. It's, you know, Leighton Orient, they've played a couple of games less because of, they've had the COVID problems in their squad. I mean, what do you make of the game? What, what are you expecting from this one? I think it's going to be, it's a tight packed month, isn't it? We've had a really busy turnaround of fixtures. So obviously that strength and depth in the squad is going to be so important. Obviously, obviously they've had a difficult start to the season late in Orient with the COVID situation, which almost affected us with the Mansfield game as well. So it's one of those things that you know is going to happen to more clubs. But I think, you know, they're managing to take it in their stride, which is which has been good to see. But obviously for us, it's going to be a difficult game having played on Saturday, then a Tuesday night, then another Saturday, then another Tuesday night. Obviously, we are going to be relying on those younger players, those more inexperienced players to come in. And obviously, the worries with uh, Lewis Page and Lewis Ward now as well. It's going to be an interesting game to see how that develops. Uh, obviously, Lewis Ward, so Lewis Page, sorry, going off injured in the, in the first half but against Scunthorpe. But Jack Sparks came on and got an assist shortly after. So, I mean, it's not like we're losing a man and, and gaining someone lesser we're gaining an equally as good player aren't we yeah exactly and I think that's that's important with the strength and depth that we've got in this squad obviously um being in Bath I, lot, I watched a lot of Alex Hartridge last season and he had a very similar game where one of the Bath players got injured and came on straight away and was so assured so I think it's a real strength that we've got with these young players that they are almost ready and waiting on the sidelines to come on whenever needed and come on and straight away hit the ground running, which is what you really want to see. I think if everybody's aware that Exeter City are known for having fairly good home form and obviously the one defeat this season, but away from home, we're still unbeaten. And especially when you're looking to be in the top half of the table, away performance is always really positive, uh, really good to, to have on. Yeah, I think our away, our away performances have always been something that we've kind of had consistently pretty decent away from home obviously we travel really well away from home as fans as well so obviously that's a really good thing usually in non-covid times is that we've got that away support you know consistently about 400 fans going to every away game but it's been nice to see that even without the fans that home advantage that the home teams often have has kind of been taken away a little bit and actually we've kept that kind of consistency in our away form which is really good to see and I know you've joined me at a couple of games this season and you're going to be coming to a few more before the end of the year. But I mean, for you, when, when you're not there, when, you, when you're watching from uni or from home, how have you found it following Exeter City on, on iFollow and on social media rather than being at the game? I think because I've had a years of it previous, obviously I came to uni last year, so it's less of a shock to me than it was. Like last year it was very difficult, but I think that was also, again, a little bit of FOMO that everyone else was in the ground. Whereas now you've got less of that in that everybody's in the same boat from home. Um, obviously, I think having done an A match on I follow commentary, I think the commentary teams are absolutely outstanding. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think from what it was, it's a, as a platform, it's really grown and it's a really high quality stream. And obviously, it's it's good to know that you are giving eight pounds something to the club every time you do purchase a match pass. So. Finally, I'll ask you for a score prediction for Leighton Orient versus Exeter City. Oh, now uh, I joked about this before we started recording that um, I did the Park Life for um, the Sulphur game and I predicted a 20 nil because it was the Trust's 20th anniversary, but I think a 2 1 to Exeter. 2 1, I think we'll all take that. Thanks, Yaz. Vibes. Thank you so much for joining us on Park Life this evening. We really hope you've enjoyed the show. As ever, do get in touch with us if you have any feedback. Tonight's game, remember, you can still pick up a match pass for just £10 on the website. Watch that on iFollow and back the boys. And of course, make sure you follow us on social media at ECFC Official on Twitter, Facebook and the like. And enjoy the game. Come on, City!